Welcome back to the Parks and Education channel. I have spent a lot of time trying to figure out AI and how it can be useful for teachers. And I have been really reluctant to put a video out. But I think you're gonna see a lot more because I got really, really excited when I figured this out. And I don't think it's out there yet, but I have the hack on how teachers can take YouTube videos and Edpuzzle. And the biggest pain is figuring out what questions to put in there. That's why so many teachers reuse videos inside of Edpuzzle, but you can do it yourself using AI, using ChatGPT, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So you can see that I've got an Edpuzzle screen opened up along with a YouTube video that I found that was a science lesson on gravity for kids. So I'm going to get into my Edpuzzle account. I'm gonna get started. So. All I'm gonna do once I'm logged in is I'm gonna search for the video that I found here on YouTube on the right hand side. So I'm going to click the address at the top, control C, and I'm gonna to go to search for YouTube and see if I can find the video and pull it up. Perfect, Gravity for Kids, there it is. Now, the biggest pain that teachers have is taking the time to put in your own questions for the students. It's great, it's a great learning experience. I love Edpuzzle, I love using it in my classroom, but that is the biggest time sucker for teachers. Let me show you what to do instead and use ChatGPT to create the questions for you. Here's the video, I haven't even watched the whole thing, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to these three dots right here next to share. And when I click that, I'm gonna go down to show transcript. Click it. On the right hand side, you will see that it will show the transcript of everything that's in the video. And you can go ahead and left click and highlight all of the text that is there. I'm gonna control C to copy that, and I'm gonna go over to ChatGPT. Now, I've already signed in. If you don't know how to sign into ChatGPT, that's a whole different video, and it's up to you whether you wanna give your email address and phone number, but I did it. And what I want to do here in the prompt is I wanna make sure that I tell ChatGPT exactly what I want. So I'm gonna try this. I'm going to say, Please send multiple choice questions based off of the following copy of the YouTube video transcript and provide answers. And I'm going to paste all of that copy that I just had and hit return. And let's see what comes back. Got to scroll down just a little bit. And it is giving me 10 multiple choice questions that go along with the video, all off of the transcript. So as this is going, I thought to myself, all right, this saved me the time in creating the questions, but wait a minute, Ugh, now I gotta figure out where these questions go, because some of them I found when I did this a couple of times, they weren't in order of the transcript. It just kind of read the transcript and made up questions for you. And of course, if you don't like something, you can ask it to rewrite it uh, however you want, right? We can fine tune these questions to make them really, really, what you want your kids to understand. So I went back into YouTube and I thought to myself, there's gotta be a way to see the timestamps. And so the dots right here, and typically they'll show up, but I said, what if I go ahead and copy this and I can copy all of the timestamps as well and try to ask it a different prompt this time. So I'm gonna paste this all in there first. And I'm gonna go back up to the top. I'm gonna to make sure to hold shift so it doesn't take off on me and start doing something. And I'm gonna take my prompt from before. I'm gonna tweak it. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna paste it inside of the new box. Create 10 multiple choice questions based off the following YouTube video transcript. Provide answers and the exact place slash time in the video that I should ask the question. 
Let's see what happens. So the questions are being created, and I've done this a couple of times, but some of the time it will create all of the questions and it will give you the time at the end. Number one goes here, number two goes here, number three goes here, and it's probably four seconds to five seconds either way, but really it's pretty spot on. On this time, and this has happened again to me, it's creating the question and then it's giving me the actual time. So as this is creating, I want to go and I'm going to take just number three because it says number three can go right here at time 205. How does the size of an object's mass affect the gravitational force? So I'm going to go to around 205 in the video. Let's see if I can fast forward here. 205. Gravity, the bigger the mass the greater the gravitational force. This is why all of the planets in our solar system revolve around the sun. The sun is so large compared to the planets that each planet is pulled or attracted to the sun as they orbit around it. Let's look at an example. Do you think that someone who weighs 100 pounds on Earth would weigh more on Jupiter or on the moon? If you said Jupiter, you're right. Since Jupiter has more mass, its gravitational pull is greater. So, the greater the mass, the stronger the gravitational force. Let's go down below here and we see, there it is, our answers are down below this time. The greater the mass, the stronger gravitational force. So you see, all right, it started because it was timestamps. That's where it's grabbing the text from. So you got to listen a little bit, but it gives you that range of exactly where you want to add a question. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this over just a little bit. And I am at 245. I'm going to try to add a question. Multiple choice. And now number three, I can copy, I can paste, and I've got to go through one by one, but this is going to be a time saver for a lot of people. So A, copy B, which is going to be the correct answer. We got another choice, C, and we've got D. And there you go you have your first question into your video. We're gonna click save, and now all you have to do is do it with the other nine, and make sure the questions are exactly what you want. This is what teachers want, time savers. How can you make the content exactly what you want and make it a time saver for yourself? Try this out, comment below, tell me what you think, tell me what we can improve on, but I think that this is going to be huge for all of you Edpuzzle users out there. I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next one.